Yanga, 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 Yanga. Which one na Yanga? Oh, Yanga, Oh. 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 Which one na Yanga? Oh. Yanga o, which one na yanga o? 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 Yanga o. Waiting to you, you too, Sabi Judge, Sabi Judge person. Ah, waiting to you, you too, Sabi Judge, Sabi Judge person. Ah, waiting to you, you too, Sabi Judge, Sabi Judge person. Ah, waiting to you, you too, Sabi Judge, Sabi Judge person. Ah, ah. Waiting to you, you too, Sabi Judge, Sabi Judge person. Ah, waiting to you, you too, Sabi Judge, Sabi Judge person. Ah. Eh? Ah <laughs> uh ah. -uh. Waiting to you. Hmm. You too, Sabi, judge person, Abi. Hmm. Oh, yeah, come up from my bedroom, Jare. This, my apple, your apple, uncle. <laughs> you didn't shout. Hmm. You didn't make shakara. <laughs> you won't bring Wahala on my front door. Hey, I beg. Come on, come on, come on. I beg, oh, come on. I did hail from Niger. From that delta, from that south, 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 south. My English done broken, finished like your mentality. You they vex me, oh. Cause you know they hear a word. Now when you go, they carry judgment from this our Niger. Woman, they lay with woman from time. Oh. Who don't know? Who don't know? Who don't know? Go know. My yaw. <laughs> my yaw. Hey, my yaw. I love that woman pieces like way. Niger, they love palm oil. I they love that woman scatter. I didn't make a younger for um. I did love that woman scatter. I did love that woman scatter. I did love that woman scatter. My oh, I love that woman pieces. My oh, <laughs> my oh, I love that woman scatter. My oh, <laughs> my oh, I love that woman pieces. My oh. <laughs> My yawo, oh, I love that woman. Scatter. My yawo. Oh. <laughs> My yawo, oh, I love that woman. Peace. My yawo. <laughs> My yawo, oh, I love that woman. Scatter. My yawo. <laughs> My yawo, oh, I love that woman. Peace. My yawo. Oh. <laughs> my yaw, oh, I love that woman scatter. My yaw, oh. my yaw, oh, I love that woman pieces. My yaw, oh. <laughs> my yaw, oh, I love that woman pieces. My yaw, oh. my yaw, oh, I love that woman scatter. My yaw. Oh. My yaw, oh, I love that woman pieces. My yaw, oh. hey. My yaw, oh, I love that.
that woman scatter. Maya, Maya, oh, I love that woman in pieces. Maya, 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 Did you hear me? I did talk, say I didn't make it younger for him. She didn't like him. Pata pata na my apple, na my life, na true, na so. I think a lot about anger and the utility of anger, actually. I think sometimes when people are angry, something has happened and they are truly fucking vexed. People want you to calm down, they want you to relax, they want you to move on, they want you to get over it. But me, what I want to talk about is the utility of anger. Anger like a cleansing fire, removing that which you do not need. That is the kind of anger, that kind of powerful anger, that kind of freeing anger, that cleansing anger. When you're so vexed, you just like walk away from something you should have walked away from however many months or years ago. That kind of vexation, that kind of anger is transformative. And if you harness it properly, it can transform your life. Not the anger that stays too long and then festers, no. Not the anger that turns into bitterness, no. But the anger that liberates and that cleanses, that anger is powerful. And I've realized that sometimes I look back on my past and I, I, I get angry about things that already happened and I feel like, am I not over this? Have I not done the work to get over this, to get through this, to have healed from this? And what I realize is a couple of things. One. Sometimes you have compassion for yourself in the past, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you're not over something. Two, if time has passed and you're now more angry about something than you were in the past, what that might say is my level of love of self and respect of self has increased to the point that that which I was okay with before, can I get an amen, is no longer fucking okay. And that's me is more a signal of my own evolution rather than I'm not over something. So those are some of my thoughts on anger. Those are some of my thoughts on anger. And now, to speak of forgiveness, because to me, talking about anger you're probably going to end up talking about forgiveness, whether you like it or not. What I found, I'll speak from my own perspective in my own life, is that when others are not comfortable with however long I've been angry, then it becomes a conversation of you need to forgive. You, in fact, need to forgive in order to let go. How many times have we heard that? If you don't forgive, you can't let go. You're forgiving whoever harmed you or hurt you. Not because what they did was wrong, right? This is, what, this is what everybody says, or what a lot of people say. But so that you can let go, the forgiveness is not for them, but it's for you. But what I want to tell you is that this concept of forgiving people, forgiving the unforgivable, really is not about social, excuse me, really is not about your consciousness being raised or you somehow getting to a more evolved space as a human being or you being more godlike. The idea that you must forgive those who have 
trespassed against you is really something that comes deeply from white supremacy. And I would say the violent forms of institutionalized Christianity because Christianity, a tool that has been used to oppress and colonize and to quote unquote keep people in their quote unquote oppressed places, that ideology will tell you to continue to forgive those who have tra transgressed against you. That mentality, white supremacy, patriarchy will continue to tell you that there is a moment later on in time where all of your forgiving of bastards and assholes and goats will be rewarded. But I'm here to tell you that if forgiveness is for the one who was hurt, me, as someone who has been hurt, I will tell you, I don't need to forgive anyone for what they have done, for, done to me to be free. The only person I need to forgive is myself for whatever judgments, whatever way I've been judging myself or telling myself there's something wrong with me. If I choose not to forgive that which is unforgivable, that in no way impedes my spiritual evolution or the raising of my consciousness or the, the, the heightening of my vibration. When someone does something wrong to you, it is your choice to say, I forgive or I don't. No one can manipulate you or gaslight you or force you into forgiving. If forgiveness is for me who is harmed, I am telling you, I do not forgive those. If I don't feel like forgiving them, if it does not come naturally, if it does not flow, then I won't forgive. And I want to encourage all of us to hold our anger. Hold that anger and allow it to shape you into a space of freedom. Allow that anger to be transmuted into something that serves you that takes you higher. Allow that anger to be alchemized into love for yourself. An anger so fierce it turns into you loving yourself so deep that nobody can ever cross you like that again. Forgiveness is not an obligation, it is a choice. And you never have to forgive if you don't want to. Your spiritual evolution has nothing to do with whom you forgive. Your spiritual evolution has to do with your own choice to let go and to move from a space of love, whether or not you ever choose to forgive. And those are some of my thoughts on anger and forgiveness. <laughs> there is no freedom for any of us if that freedom is not for each and every single one of us. Disabled, queer, poor, women, marginalized genders, all of us. The NSARS movement began in Nigeria in October 2020 as thousands of Nigerians marched in the streets in Nigeria and, and internationally in protest of the special anti-robbery squad that has been terrorizing, stealing from, and murdering Nigerian citizens since 1992. During these protests, some Nigerians said, oh, I beg you. <laughs> The matter where they ground now, nah, nah, police brutality. We, we go, we go tackle your own matter later. I beg you. That, 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 that game matter now. Nah, another team. And I know they, I know they enter road. They, they, they come fight that one today. Okay, I see. So only some of us deserve freedom. Then I want to know. Okay, so, so since now, now later you they talk. Which, which later is later? Oga, I beg, explain. Which later is later, I am wondering. When will it become clear that if we are marching in the streets for freedom and the loudest voices say they can leave a group of people behind today, they can leave your ass behind tomorrow. No one is ever safe if some of us are disposable, if some of our oppressions are less important, less urgent. You're saying my freedom can be delayed, but yours, oh, no, 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 no. Yours must be addressed now, as in right now, as in right, 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 right now. There is no freedom for us as Africans without a deep sexual, sensual, and love revolution. There is no freedom that can survive in a society that stifles, hates, and judges others based on who they love and who they are attracted to. If we cannot reimagine emotional and sexual intimacy in ways that reflect the truth of who we truly are, we cannot ever expect to craft a free society externally. 
I don't know how we could take learn this lesson though. I don't know. <laughs> but the future of Nigeria and of Africa depends deeply, deeply on our ability to reimagine our lives and link arms for real, for real, with each other in deeper, new ways, ancestral ways, futuristic ways, creative ways, ways that say fuck colonization in every single solitary iteration and expression, ways that adore and celebrate our gay African asses because we too are African. We too are Nigerian. We gay as fuck, androgynous, gender binary, destroying, beautiful, brilliant butterflies of sweetness. Nigeria is our home. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for that amazing performance, that was spellbinding, stunning, extraordinary, what an incredible journey you've just taken us on. I really appreciate and honor the aesthetic that you're sharing with us. Could you tell us a little bit about your aesthetic, a little bit about why you've chosen this work to share this year in the festival? Wow. Um, Regarding my aesthetic, I always think about how I can bring the texture, the almost like the fabric of my mind because I love fabric, I love textiles, I love Ankara, I love Adiri, like I love all different kinds of African textiles, specifically Nigerian um, and West African textiles. And when I'm thinking about creating a body of work, I want to bring that feeling, like that feeling of you can feel the clothes that I'm wearing, you can see the design like on my clothing, or you can even feel like you're jumping into the design as a part of the performance or a part of the experience. Mm -hmm. um, visually, like I'm, I love color. I love colors. Colors speak like numbers speak, like yes. everything speaks. And so um, I really pay attention to what colors are calling to me and what the um, work is asking for, what the work demands, what the work uh, necessitates and requires. So it's really about the work that defines the colors and the aesthetic and the vibe and the energy. And I want to, it's like what is what I am experiencing in my head as I'm creating this work or um, that rhythm, that vibe, that energy, that I need to bring that to you. And for me to bring that to you, it's like, it's about the way that I talk and it's about the, the rhythm in my voice and it's about the colors that I wear and it's about how I hold my body and it's about, it's about so many things. Like every single opportunity, every single space that I have an opportunity to create a visual experience for you, that lives beyond um, a word, then I'll do that. Because the word amplifies the color, the color amplifies the word, the aesthetic amplifies what, you know, the art. Everything is amplifying mm -hmm. each other. There mm -hmm. is something that I can, so I designed this, right? Yes. And so there is something that I can express in designing a body, in designing cloth, in designing clothing, right? Mm -hmm. I can express a feeling, I can create a mood, I can, I can say something with my fashion, um, my fashion choices, with my design, with the cut of the cloth, the choice of the cloth, the textile, everything, how short, how long, how big, how wide, I can make a statement with that. There is nothing else that can make the statement that textile can make, and there is nothing else that can make the statement that words make. So for me, when I'm creating a, a, an experience or a performance, something that you're experiencing with multiple senses, I want to give you something from every direction, every sense, mm -hmm. um, so that I can, as accurately as possible, introduce you to this world that I feel and that I experience and that I'm from artistically. So all of those choices, everything is all about how can I give you the texture, the vibe, the energy, the, like what can I do to pre uh, make it present for you more than just this is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Let me describe it with my words. Mm -hmm. But rather, if I can describe it in such a way that you can experience it yourself, then that is um, truer to the art than me explaining it. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, I, I don't really know that I actually ever articulated that in that way. So thank you so much for that question. Um, that's always, mm -hmm. that's always my energy is like, I really want to give it to you so you can experience it yourself mm -hmm. rather than 
I narrate it to you, and now you have my narration, but you don't have that experience. Like, I saw these colors. Like, I, I saw the way that this cloth flew mm-hmm. across the screen, or right. I heard the sound, or her voice got deep, mm-hmm. or she was mm-hmm. stomping on the ground, or the way yes. her voice got guttural, or the way it got very light, or, like, yes. every sense that I have with you, um, I want to mm-hmm. use it. That's, that's, I, don't wanna, I don't want it to go to waste because your attention is so precious and life being what it is, serendipity and sliding doors and whatnot, I may never have this moment again with it. I will never have this moment again. So while mm-hmm. I have it, let me give you everything. Yes. So you really, whenever you, 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 whenever you remember me again, like this performance, this experience, the, the memory is so vivid, right? Mm-hmm. It's almost like you were on stage. Like, I want to give you something that real that in 15 years you remember this moment you'll be like damn that was amazing right that's what yeah that's it and that's what we've just experienced (laughs) and i thank you for it and speaking of the experience of your work how else can we support your work moving forward Mm -hmm. how can we support other experiences this amazing clothing Mm -hmm. like how do i get that (laughs) in my life yes i love it okay yeah please showcase yes honey you have to be clear about all of the genius that's present for this work yes yes i'm a fashion designer Mm -hmm. um and you can absolutely support my work by um going on ankara queen dumb dot com um we'll put Mm -hmm. it on the screen and K A R A Q U E E N D O M dot com, and that'll direct you to my marketplace where you can um, definitely support. Grab my designs. I make accessory clutches, um, bow ties. I say, and you know, on. yeah, you know, I design all kinds of clothing, and um, I really don't think so much about restricting people to particular genders. Mm -hmm. I really don't think about so much about restricting people to particular genders. I just create clothing and you just buy whichever one vibes with whatever you want. Um, So you can support me by absolutely buying my work, by spreading the word about my work. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you can purchase, excuse me, not purchase, what's it? You can go on um, NigerianDikeRealness.com, which is where you can find out about my podcast. Mm -hmm. And you can listen to my podcast. I talk about self-love. what it is to be um, an African dyke talking about and addressing um, healing, um, mental health issues, politics, pop culture, music, whatever pops into my mind. Mm -hmm. So that's a space that I really created to really think about and talk about ideas that specifically impact um, African dykes, specifically Nigerian dykes. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's a space where I have a lot of fun. Um, How else can you support me? Well, you can be down with my Patreon. Um, Mm -hmm. You can be down with my Patreon. We have enough space. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'll take this off. It's a little hot. Um, You can support my Patreon, patreon.com slash myloveisaverb. Um, In my Patreon space, I really offer a lot of, um, how can I articulate this? I created my Patreon as a space for healing. Throughout Mm -hmm. my own spiritual journey, I realized that I wanted and needed a space to address like what I was dealing with spiritually, how that it was impacting me as an artist mm-hmm. and also my mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a huge reason why I created Ni- the Nigerian Dyke Realness podcast. And also my Patreon mm-hmm. is a space where um, I share all kinds of tools, tips, advice, suggestions, readings, writing prompts, recipes that support one's own spiritual growth Mm -hmm. and healing and dealing with one's mental health. So that's a community that you're welcome to join in at whatever level you contribute monthly at whatever level you choose to. That supports my work in the world, that funds my work in the world and the art that I create. Um, You can definitely go on myloveisaverb.com, which is a Mm -hmm. place where that will lead you to everything that I've mentioned. That's my main website. You can find out, find about my writing, and from there, you can find out about my YouTube, youtube.com backslash Yanga Goddess, which is the same title as this, this experience. Um, so you can find different 
um, videos um, of recipes. I talk about politics. I talk about hair, self-love, spirituality, God, art. I share my own my poetry. I share dancing. Um, so my YouTube is absolutely a space. Please run my numbers up. Go and like, follow, <laughs> and subscribe, and let me know okay. what you're interested in hearing about in the future. You can absolutely get at me on Instagram and um, Instagram and Twitter for sure. Um, my love is a verb on both of those spaces, and Ankara Queendom on both of those spaces. Um, you got, you got yeah. to just send me money because you love and appreciate me. Hey, I'm here for it. <laughs> love letters. Um, mm -hmm. You can email me. My love is a verb at Gmail. I always am interested in connecting with people. Um, I always make sure that people know that. Email me. Feel free to email me and reach out to me um, if you have a question. If you want to collaborate, if you want to connect me with somebody, please just email me. It's free. Um, I mean, the data is not free, but it is free to email. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And what I would what I would request is, you know, if you're excited about my work, if you're interested in my work, let me know. And absolutely spread the word, retweet, send it out, introduce my work to somebody. That's one of the most important things I think you can do is just spread the word, mm -hmm. like put it on whatever social media platform you're on. Um, that's exciting. Um, please chat me up. I would love to hear your thoughts. And is there something else I wanted to say? I think that's it. My love is a verb. I think that's it. Yeah, Fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. You've said Thank so you. much. You've given so much, and I appreciate it. Honor and treasure you as a gift in this festival. Um, thank you for being present and being uh, such an honored guest in the National Queer Arts Festival 2021. Yanga Goddess. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll keep looking out for what to find for you and you next. Thank you, and make sure that we check out all of the sites that um, support the artist, and make sure that you fill out the survey after the show. Make sure you take a look at that QR code and send us in some of those survey, that survey requests, because that is just as important as money for the artist. That's how you can support the National Queer Arts Festival continuing to make this work. So thank you so much, and let's have a great day. <laughs> I have a PS. I have a oh. PS. <laughs> I have one PS, which is you can also buy my book, which is a book. Uh, it's a work of fiction that addresses um, African queer sexuality and intimate partner violence and self love and a journey into oneself. My book is called Forces I Deal It. That's also on my mylovesaverb.com under books. And the last thing, but absolutely the most important thing, is I wanted to make sure, let me make sure you can see my eyes. I wanted to thank you for your time and your energy and your presence. I wanted to thank you for listening. I wanted to thank you for listening to this part as well. Um, I really always, always appreciate every millisecond of listening that I receive from any human being. I don't take it for granted at all. So I really do thank you for your time and your listening, and I really do mean it. Like, hit me up, email me, DM me, let's like chat about art and whatever. And I absolutely want to thank you, Mona, for your incredible work. I want to thank you um, for being an amazing videographer, Robert. I want to thank you, Kim, and I want to thank QCC and NQAF and all of y'all for supporting queer artists um, in the Bay Area for such a long time. Uh, I just want to make sure that my my gratitude and appreciation is on the record. So thank you Ashe. so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. oh. And we'll look to see what happens next. <laughs> <laughs>